welcome or welcome back to the 8th concession. My name is Natalie. Well, this is the farthest behind I've been in gardening season for a long time. I haven't posted a video in a little while simply because I've been so busy with other commitments. I just haven't even gotten into the garden. I would have taken the camera with me, but the garden is behind. I have the spring crops in that you saw me plant, the spinach and the onions and lettuce, celery, cabbage, but I've done nothing since then and it is driving me crazy but everything has been delayed. The blocks for the new garden bed were delayed. The soil was delayed. <laughs> everything has just been working against me this year. I'm determined to get back on track this week. Now the hot weather has arrived, which is really odd for us here in Southern Ontario. We're hitting 30, 28 to 31 Celsius. Um, and that's, that's pretty typical for a Canadian summer, believe it or not, if you're not from here. But it's not typical for the last day of May or early June. That is super hot and dry. Although we had a super wet spring, we haven't had a drop of rain in, I'd say, two weeks. And the forecast is completely clear. Nothing coming. So I see a lot of garden watering in my future. But that's if I get the plants in the ground. Now, some of the reasons that I haven't gotten it in, like I said, were delays, but also because I want to do a couple of more um, projects that, before I plant. Well, they have to be done before I plant. Um, as some of you know who've been watching my cloche videos, I really like um, ancient techniques. They might not be ancient, ancient, but they're at least a couple hundred years old. The way farming was done before the Industrial Revolution. So. What sort of methods did different cultures use to plant their plants, keep them healthy? Where did they put them? How did they water them? How did they fertilize them? The cloches were a great success. So I want to try another project right now, and that is in watering my plants. Now, as I mentioned, we've had a very dry session here or a dry um, stretch here which is very unusual and it looks like it's supposed to continue for most of the summer because of El Nino and the weather patterns have all changed. So I'm thinking, okay, my hose doesn't even really reach really well all the way down to my garden. What can I do to help these plants, especially in raised beds? They, um, they can dry out a lot faster. So I wanted to try something that was used in South America, Central America, drier places, and that, and that is Oyas. Now an Oya is simply a clay watering jug. It is unglazed clay, and the reason for that is it allows water to seep through the clay at a very slow rate. In fact, probably only as fast as the roots want to take it and it makes a great watering system. It conserves water and it's underground. Now, true Oyas, which are lovely, are pretty expensive like most things. And so I was trying to look for a way to see if I could make my own for a much more reasonable price. Now, mine is not going to be as stylish, but I'm hoping it will work. And that's my project for today. And that's why I'm delayed getting the peppers in because I want to experiment with one in my pepper bed and one in my tomato bed because they're pretty heavy waterers. So that I haven't planted my peppers yet, but if I can get the Oya done today, the peppers are going in quickly. So here outside on my patio table, uh, in the spot where I think there are the fewest mosquitoes <laughs> because it's really bad this year, I have what I need. I have two unglazed clay pots, so terracotta. I have some waterproof silicone, um, silicone. I have a little bit of modeling clay and I have what I'm going to use, I'm going to repurpose as my watering tube. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're going to give it a try. So to mimic the shape of the Oyas, I'm going to use these two different size clay pots that I got at the dollar store. This one was $3.50, this one was $4. So what I want to do, is to put them like this to get that same sort of teardrop shape of the actual Oyas. 
Now the first thing I have to do on my bottom one is plug up this hole. Sorry about the shadows here. I'm trying to do this outside um, under the umbrella, but it is a very bright day. So I'm hoping you can see that there is a hole in the bottom of this because it's actually a planter. I need to close that up because you don't want the water draining out the bottom. And then I am going to combine them like this to get that Oya shape and I'm going to have to silicone around this edge so again the water doesn't flow out here. I want the water to stay contained in the pot and seep through as the roots need it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of fill this with a bit of modeling clay and then I'm going to put some silicone around it uh, to keep it in place and then I'm going to silicone them together. Wish me luck. Okay, now I've let that dry. I think it's pretty good. And I am ready to attach the upper pot. Take the tags off there. So I want it to go like this. So I'm going to put a bead of silicone right here, attach the other pot, and then let them dry. Now I've let this dry for about half an hour and now I am going to attach the top. See that it just sits just inside there. So I'm going to add a bead of silicone all around this edge. It's probably not going to be pretty. I'm not very good at this but as long as it keeps the water in. Let's see how this goes. There, now I'm going to let that dry again for a while before I do the final step. Okay, that's been drying for about half an hour. I went and did some other work in the garden. And now, all I did was snap off the end of this dollar store broom. Because this is going to be my tube in the top so I can water from above ground. Now, true Oyas have a nice wide top and that's the only flaw in this is that with this smaller tube, it is gonna take longer to fill it. But, you know, that's the way it is when you DIY. So all I'm going to do is silicone that in place and then when I want to fill it, I will pop a funnel in there just to make it easier to get it in this rather small tube. But I don't mind if it takes a bit longer because this whole thing has cost me $7.58, $9.50 plus a bit of silicon. So let's say $10 compared to $50 or $60 for the Oyas that you can buy. Um, if you can afford a real Oya, good for you. If you'd like to do DIY or if you're a uh, gardening on a budget, this, this Oya may be for you. So I'm going to put the top in now and then finish letting it cure. And tomorrow we're going to plant it in the pepper bed and put some peppers around it and see how it goes. I'm going to experiment with just using one of the Oyas to see if it works before I do any others. And I'm going to do it here in my pepper bed. I'm going to put it right here, plant some peppers around it, and compare how they grow to ones that will grow next door here, which will just get ordinary watering. So I'm going to see how deep I have to put this. So I've dug a big hole in the garden. This is where I want to put my Oya. Made it as deep as I can until I hit wood at the bottom there. Set it in. Now I just have to fill it.
now I can finally get to planting my peppers. These are all early California wonder. They've been in my little pots for far too long. So I'm going to plant them all around the Oya here so that their roots will be able to reach water whenever they want. So I'm going to see how these peppers do compared to the other peppers that I'm going to grow in the other part of the garden that are not near an Oya and I'm going to keep that watered. But that much water should last two or three days so I don't have to water them every day and that's a bonus. So I have the rest of my pepper plants set out because I can't wait to get them in the ground. So here at the front we have five jalapeno. These five right here are the Hungarian hot wax. All these others around the early California wonder that are by the uh, Oya are more bell peppers. And then right at the back here are three hot peppers. The two on the outside with the darker leaves, they are a black pepper called Royal Black. We really enjoyed that in our salsa last year. And the one in the middle is actually um, just a hot mix. It came from a pack of pepper seeds that just said a mix of hot peppers. So I'm not quite sure what kind it is, but it's at the back there with the other super hot peppers. So let's get these in the ground finally. There, the pepper bed is finally in and I'm ready to start my pepper experiment with my Oya waterer. You can see back there, I still have some work to do on the new section. Take down the bricks in between behind these garlic. There I'm gonna plant all my summer squash, my zucchini, but that's gonna have to wait for another day. It is so hot out today. I'm gonna give these a good watering the ones that don't have the Oya, that is, and uh, let them do their thing. So thanks for joining me today. It is so hot out here. I shouldn't complain though, <laughs> because it's not winter, but I am so happy to finally have my peppers in, one step of the garden done, and to start my new experiment with an ancient gardening technique and that is using an Oya, a clay pot, to help water a garden, especially in really dry conditions. And while we're not typically dry, so far this year we have been very dry and hot. So if that continues, I think this is going to be great and I'll keep an eye on how those four plants are doing that have access to that Oya compared to the, all the other peppers that I'm going to have to water by hand. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Thank you.